Hi everyone, my name is Adogs, and thank you all for coming to my channel. So the five ride lines from Lyrical Melody uh, recently got some new support in the new Festival Collection 2023. The five ride lines got a new grade V form and they also got some support. And today I just wanted to rank the new grade freeze from one to five, one being best and five being the worst. Now I just want to be able I just want to put a bit of a disclaimer here though that I feel like all the five decks are pretty pretty strong um, they're definitely nothing below T3 that's for sure um, and I feel like they all could potentially have a spot in the meta possibly um, I feel like some of the decks uh, are definitely a lot stronger than the other ones but then I feel like some decks have some high roll potential that it could still games. So I think overall they're they're definitely quite solid. So with that out of the way, um, we'll jump into the rankings and the tier list. So I had a bit of a conundrum here. So um, there are two decks that I think really stand out and it was really hard to choose between which is first and which one's like the second best and the two uh rylands i'm talking about specifically is lister and lauren Arell. so i'm just going to talk about lister first and then i'll talk about lauren Arell, and then i'll put which one i think is first and which one i think is second so uh lister so she recently got some new support with a new grade 3, as well as two support cards. So Velistra herself, um, you could say she had a bit of an upgrade, as when she's placed in the Vanguard Circle, you can discard one and choose a gem from your drop or your soul and add it to your hand. Then her second skill was by soul blasting one, uh, you activate her effect according to the gem soul blasted. So if it was the red gem uh, you were able to give her plus 15k well, then if it was the blue gem the amethyst uh, you could look up the top five and then core two out and then shuffle your deck and then with the new gem it was called crossing a loom i'm pretty sure that was called and it um it's a very powerful gem so this gem counts as both the gems so which means that you don't have to run as many gems now you can get away with running two because the right line can automatically search one the gem also allows you to draw one if you have a list of vanguard and give you vanguard plus 5k so it hits a magic number of just 18 but then also it had a second skill that if your opponent's vanguard was in grade 3 is in grade 3 sorry um, you can counter blast one and soul blast a clarissa you know, at the end of the battle she attacks, or I think during the battle she attacks, you can stand a rig up. So, um, in combination with some of the older support, so for example, um, Elvira and Ophelia, uh, they're kind of the, 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 the main ones, um, that gem gives them quite a bit of a boost, as because you only need to run two of the gems now, and the crossing the race counts as both gems. When you play the new gem, Elvira sees it as a Amethyst, because you need Amethyst to draw one, you can draw one. And then with Ophelia, when you Soul Blast out the gem, um, because the gem counts as both, Ophelia gets both the effects. So that gem um, definitely does a lot. But then also with Felista as well, the fact that we look at top 5 core 2, and then you don't put the rest in the drop it's actually a really good way of deck thinning but then she also creates a board because she gets to call two cards out so um she can potentially help um call out pieces which is very nice so she's very like kind of very solid standalone vanguard being able to create a board and then uh next the both oh, sorry the grade two uh, the grade 2 had the skill of uh, if your opponent's finger was on grade 3 and you played a gem, she got plus 5. 
but then she also had uh, a second skill which was placed you could put a card from your hand in the console fill the top five and add um, two ballistas with different card names and if you did not find any you could draw a card so that was very subtle too so you had ways of deck thinning um, plusing so and plusing a board in, in the hand as well um, she could potentially draw a lot if you have um, a very good setup which is kind of fairly easy to achieve um, I was running stuff like Yuikos and everything as well just to you know call free cards out it's like PGs if you sit for top five at the hand so you can kind of like um, create a sort of board and kind of plus in hand I, I, I think it was really solid all around um, so it isn't really as pushing the lineup, which was great. And then we look at Lonerel. So Lonerel, um, she's definitely quite, definitely quite strong. Um, looking at the reveals first, I wasn't too sure about her. I thought, oh, you know, it's kind of like the original Lonerel, but it's actually quite strong. Um, the reason for that being is. As an example, if you go second and you have a way of putting a Lonero on your soul, if you call the Grade 2 Crit Song when you ride Lonero over the Grade 2, you get to draw one because the Grade 2 uh, song skills are on its place. If you put it as a Grade 3, you get to draw one. So that's one plus already. Then with uh, Loro's skill, uh, when she's placed in the top five, and you get to call one card that's grade three or less from among them, called three or so cool, sets a plus two, one pretty much being on board. If you find either the old grade two, which was I think kind of us one, ditch one, draw two, so it's like a, a plus, or if you find the new grade two or new grade one, that's another plus as well. So that's three pluses already. And then next when Loro attacks, when you sing a song, if you sing the grade one song, you draw another card. So that's another plus. So that's four pluses so far. And then lastly, I said if you go in second and you soul blast out Loro, she gets an extra drive. But then she um, also gains the guard con as well. So essentially, um, if you go in second, you can potentially, on going second, you can plus five. But then, when you Persona Ride, uh, with Persona Ride, if you draw one, then if you um, use a skill again on place, look at top five, call one. Again, if you call any of those two, uh, any of those three cards talked about, it's another potential plus one. So she just constantly keeps plusing and potentially just keep getting triple drive. So she pluses a lot and it's actually quite, uh, quite good. So. The one big thing as of why I don't want to put Loro as the best out of the fight ride lines is because um, she can't really do too much going first. But in regards to Velista, if Velista sees Ophelia, um, Ophelia essentially enables you to do four attacks. But then as well, Velista lets you call two cards for free from the top five when using uh, Velista's skill. But then also, um, she becomes quite big. She becomes 33 by herself because she'll get plus 15k and then she'll also get 5k from the order. So you have a very beefy vanguard and then you also have potential of four attacks. So when going first, um, it can be quite strong. And again, she can plus almost as much as Loro. I said with the cards like a virus for that as well. So it's because of that, I definitely want to put Willista number one, and then Loro is number two. Now, as I said, they're very close. So um, this is what I think personally where I'd put Willista and Loro. Um, these two decks, I feel like, have a lot of potential in the meta. Now, I could be wrong, but I feel like they have some good potential. Now, with the third deck, um, 
I definitely want to put Felty Rosa in number three. So the reason why I put Felty Rosa here is because uh, the potential high roll that she can do um, can be quite devastating. Now what I mean by that is you have a grade one that has the ability, I think when a ghost is placed in front of her, you can choose a Felty Rosa from your drop and then put her uh, into the soul. And Felty Rosa's skill was that when a Felty Rosa is in the soul, all your ghosts in the front row get plus 10k. Then you also had the grade one that can also do that too, but it sucks a card in front of her into the soul. So you could suck a Felty Rosa in the soul. If you suck the Felty Rosa in the soul again, you can obtain that again, being given the front row 10k power. And then because of that, um, if you have ways of removing your front row and doing your five attacks every turn, um, it can be quite devastating, especially if you go first. You can be hitting columns that can go from like I think like twenty five to like thirty to forty k by going going first. So she can make some crazy numbers. Now she is kind of peace reliant, as you need to find your ghost that can allow you to remove themselves from Regard Circle so that Felty Rosa can um, call Ghost out so you get a 5 attacks to return. Another problem as well with Felty Rosa was that if you hit triggers sometimes uh, it can be kind of bad because you want to be able to pretty much do the 5 attacks every turn so that you're constantly putting pressure on with her. But I didn't want to put any lower because I feel like she's definitely stronger than the other two as I said because of the potential high roll that she can produce. So that's why I put Felty Rosa in number three. I still think Felty Rosa is pretty strong because of being out of potential with that high roll. So then next we had these two. I was a little unsure of where to put these. Um, I definitely didn't think those two were better than Felty Rosa. I feel like Felty Rosa was a lot stronger, again, because of the high roll. The, the high roll would potentially for Felty Rosa would potentially be consistent. As I said, as long as you find a way to put her in the, put her Felty Rosa on the top. And as I said, the pieces I guess of Felty Rosa, um, it's not as hard as these upper two. As again, you just kind of need to have ghosts, again, that can put themselves at the bottom to enable multi-attacks. So what do Clarissa and the Elestial do? So Elestial, she's definitely um, solid going first. She can do uh, four attacks. And she does have ways of trying to um, gain access to both the wings on your first wave free turn. So sometimes you aren't always guaranteed to get the double wings. If you get the double wings, it's really strong. Um, you're having a good game. But if you don't get the double wings, it's still okay as long as you can hit uh, the black wings number. I think the black wings was the even numbers. The reason why I say that is because if you hit the black wing, you can use a lesser skill to ditch one to find the grade two that can um, change around the card in the bind to get white wings. And by doing that, then you can get both of Lestial skills off. So you can call one, and then you can also um, get the two Vanguard attacks with Lestial. So she's pretty strong going first. Going second, she's definitely okay. But a problem I saw with Lestial is that she kind of can pop off a bit more properly once you hit Persona Ride, as the Grade 2 that can lay in a Meg does cost a Counterblast, and if the opponent does hit a defensive trigger when you're going first or especially going second, uh, the Grade 2 isn't going to hit the Vanguard, as even though it negs the Vanguard 5k, it's an 18. So you essentially are relying on hitting triggers for your regards to hit, um, which is a problem that I saw. Because I said, 
for your other regards to hit at that stage to the hit defensive, you're essentially playing two to three counter blast to get them back to 13. And there's no reliable counter charger in a Lestial, so burning all your counter blasts straight up really did really does hurt. So I think once you get to Persona right, it's definitely strong, and I definitely feel like if she goes first. Um, she does have um, some good potential. As I said, if the opponent does hit a defensive, as in when you go on first, it's not bad, because again, if you have double wings or um, you use like your grade 2 to make the Vanguard 5k, um, you can guarantee that those Rigas are going to hit. So it's because of that. Um, I think she's kind of like below the 3. Now with Clarissa, so after testing Clarissa, she gets okay, so she does she does draw quite a bit of cards. She kind of does have that ball effect being able to, to attack the front row. Um, sorry, attacking three units. So like the bang out two regards or potentially regards, whatever you wanted to do. And then she also does create some big numbers. She also did get. Uh, more earnest corrects, so you've got two more earnest corrects, so you kind of have more earnest correct cards to work with to kind of make it more consistent. Uh, the one problem I did see with Clarissa is that you won't necessarily always do much going first, as your opponent needs to be on grade 3. For you to get that brawler effect off and then also on top you need to always make sure that you have five different owners corrects but once you have all that set up um, she's pretty strong because when you get to the center right turns it hits some crazy numbers another problem I kind of see with Clarissa a little bit is if you're going up against a deck that doesn't really um, commit to me regards, it can be a little bit of a problem too. Now in this matter specifically, I think she could be fairly okay, only because of decks like Ava and Youth Burke running around, um, Clarissa can obviously like hit obscadades and everything too, so that's definitely strong. But if she goes up against any decks that are kind of don't commit to any regards or are kind of more like Vanguard based, I think she isn't as effective. And in regards to high roll with Clarissa, the, honestly think there isn't too much of a high roll with her. As I said, the idea is you're just trying to open your five different earners corrects. That's pretty much the, the high roll, as much as the standard. But for example, with Alestio, she does have potential high roll for double wings, and depending if you're getting triggers and stuff as well, which is like a Vanguard restand and stuff too. So I feel like Alestio has more high roll potential than with Clarissa. And I think because of that, I think Clarissa might unfortunately be number five. Now, again, with Clarissa, even though she is in last place, I think she still has very great potential, only because we are fairly in a meta that is kind of um, peace-reliant, um, kind of needs like a lot of the economy balls to get, like for example, with uh, Ava, with Youthburg, um, Gandiva, since it does have a, f a fair amount of few regards too, um, Leonorn, uh, Welstra, so all these decks kind of do have a board, so uh, Clarissa I think definitely might have some, um, might have somewhat a bit of impact though because of that, because I think if you go against those certain decks you have a fairly decent matchup. Um, so that's, I think, I think that's where I want to put all the five decks. Um, yeah, I think, I think this is right. 
Now, you can let me know in the comments down below if you think maybe the um, maybe some of the maybe some of the forms can be switched around. If you think something's a bit better, but I think personally this is correct. So. I hope you guys did enjoy, um, if you did make sure to leave a like and while you're down there why not subscribe and hit the notification bell so that when I upload another video you'll be notified. Hey, that was out, see ya.